the morning of July 5th. I stayed in that spot last night. You've seen the video. I decided to drive up to the top of this mountain. I wasn't anywhere near getting close to the top when I stopped last night and stayed in that spot. It's a little muddy and wet here. That's interesting. Um, so I'm driving up to the top now, and this is just incredible. So much more beautiful than I uh, had imagined. Uh, the other side of that mountain was just, you know, rocky and whatnot. You get up here, I was just driving through the trees. <clears throat> I'm probably going to get back into it in a minute here, but it's the Coronado Forest up above Sierra Vista. I highly recommend you guys driving up here uh, if you get a chance. I think a two-wheel drive car can make it. Uh, you know, it's not like you need four-wheel drive or anything. So, just better safe than sorry the way I look at things. Oh, I was saying in that last video and it got cut off, I was talking about my buddy Mark because he asked me when I was buying this thing why I would need all-wheel drive at that time. Because the cost of it was more. I was like, well, I want to do things, man. Hey, Mark, if you're watching this, this is the sort of things I've been wanting to do, bro. <laughs> it's not all beaches and surf, man. <laughs> Look at this. I mean, four-wheel drive would help. There's no doubt about it. And that's what I have now, as you guys know. Those of you guys watching this, this is beautiful up here. Wow. I think, I've got time. I think I'm going to hike around. It's not 930 yet. I mean, I'll do a little hike up here. And then uh, we got an appointment at 1 o'clock this afternoon. So I'll see you later. Okay, so I just drove up to the top, to the campground, and had a really nice conversation with uh, a Border Patrol. While I was on my little ledge of the other side of the mountain, camped out this morning, a Border Patrol agent drove by, and then a maintenance guy drove by after that. So I knew I'd run into them at the top of the mountain, and I expected it to be some craggly old, you know, Border Patrol guy, or maybe a young guy turned out to be a stunningly attractive you know blonde haired gal uh, with a great smile and you know pretty nice attitude too she's you know her attitude towards the job is a little rough you know they're they're in a tough spot the border patrol they you know she used terms like this administration you know the the, the things are set up so that you basically get to stay in the country so they're just flooding over and so in this little area on this mountain on a daily basis they're encountering groups of uh immigrants illegal immigrants just crossing over and it's worse here because the types of people who take the time to try to traverse these mountains which is somewhat treacherous they're the people with the most to lose they're the ones that have warrants they're the ones that are more dangerous they're not dealing with a lot of kids up here. They're dealing with, you know, men uh, with criminal records. So it's pretty amazing. I, we sat and chatted for quite some time. <clears throat> and she told me that as a civilian, you, you know, they want you to be armed. They would prefer you to be armed up here. So, yeah, I'm getting this from the horse's mouth, right? Um, you know, no joke. And... Um, but she said that you're unlikely as a civilian to really see them because they really want to hide from you. They don't want any trouble, which makes sense. And uh, I just wanted to take a minute and make this quick video and let you know, I mean, are, are these border patrol people are amazing human beings, right? I mean, they are just, they're putting their lives on the line every day. And, you know, they're not being supported by our government, right? They're being paid to do a job. And they're not being supported. It's a crazy situation when you think about it. The, the, the legislation, the rules, what they're doing where they're letting people just flood into the country is promoting the idea that you know, come on over. If you get here, you can stay here. And so that's where we're at. And these guys are just, and she's patrolling by herself. I mean, she's a very capable woman. I mean, she's rigged up. 
you just saw the picture. She is rigged up and she knows what she's doing. I grilled her mentally on what her, she's a dead shot. She trains all the time. She's super fit. You know, you talk to her as a normal human being and she's got this smile that would light up this whole forest at nighttime. But, you know, she takes her job seriously. She's not screwing around when it comes to doing her job and dealing with these people. So I just feel for her because she's doing a job and, you know, I ended up cheering her up because when she first started talking about it, she was a little demoralized, you know, and I don't blame her. And I'm sure a lot of Border Patrol people feel that way. So, uh, you know, this is just a little thing. Take the time to talk to your p local police officers or your Border Patrol or your park rangers. And, uh, you know, they're not most of the time when they're dealing with people, it's because you did something wrong. So your attitude towards them is kind of warped. But if you're in a good mood and you're just driving along, just pull over and take the time to talk to them. They're human beings, man. They're being paid to put their lives on the line, uh, you know, to provide safety so you can come out to these places and enjoy it. Also, leave no trace, all right? Keep it clean out there. Astro Van Tribe, be good to one another. Have a great day. I'll, I'll catch you guys on the next one. It's so cool up here. <laughs>